and the roads were treated rough all the time. Always military style, so getting in line for everything and straighten out and things like that. And whip too, where they use a whip on us all the time. Life at school was a different world. I remember him going around my desk like this, circling around. What's wrong with you? A dumb Indian and things like that. Oh, she was really mean. <laughs> she, I say she was really mean. She, she, she spoke to us, but I didn't understand a word she said. And she just, she just talked. I guess she was speaking English, and I, I didn't know anything. And, and then if we didn't understand, or if, if we're, if we're not doing what we're supposed to do, she had this long stick, a pointer stick, and she would hit us on the head with it, uh, or either hit us on the hand with it. Most wanted to return to the life they knew. There was a time that I saw one of the uh, kids, uh, there was a young man, and he was hitting the side of the head so hard that he flew across the, uh, the room. And when he woke, when he got up, after he got up, you know, he was, he had uh, blood coming out of his ears. And I didn't realize what it was about until later on in the years that I knew that he probably had ruptured eardrums from that. Speaking Navajo was forbidden. We used to get spanked in our classroom if we even speak one, one uh, language, our own language. And we used to get whacked with a yardstick or a ruler. But I just really had a hard time to, uh, to get used to that because every time I get in trouble, I'll be sucking on the brown soap. I wouldn't, we, we didn't want to, to uh, stay there. We cried, cried, cried. Some children came to boarding school in native clothes. Their appearance soon changed. They came with a clipper and they were shaving my hair out. And I was so embarrassed of all the hair that I had and I never wanted to have another long hair because of that embarrassment so I never I never grew my hair long again ever, ever since then. She got crutches then uh, when you get caught with something she'll let you have it with that crutch. At one time she hit me side of the face with her crutches and I had a kind of got blue uh, I guess it starts swelling on one side of my face that nobody did anything about it. Names were changed to Anglo names. At home, we're called by our Navajo names. At school, everyone seemed like it was either Betty or Irene or Marie. It was kind of humorous. The Phoenix Indian School is shuttered now. The school began in 1891 and closed in 1988. So I ended up getting in trouble again. At one time I got so angry and I just didn't do what was right and I got me some thumbtacks and put it on my teacher's chair because she was so mean. Some Navajo parents didn't want children in school. Others thought Western education was correct. I was glad that I went to boarding school. My parents um, saw the need for education. That was the only way I could get it because there, was, there were no buses that came our way. If they should spank you, that's what it cost to learn that powerful tool, English. My great-grandfather told me, in order to overcome the white people and their ways, you have to learn to speak their language. Think the way they do. What I was exposed to was a cowboy and Indian movie. And um, Indians were always the bad ones, and the cowboys were always the good guys. Schools were built closer to home by the first part of the 20th century. Boarding schools changed with an emphasis on Western education. About 2,000 Navajos attended the Intermountain Indian School in Brigham City, Utah. The school was in operation from 1950 to 1984. Intermountain was closed as many students preferred being close to home. We also want to be careful not to solely make Indians into victims, make them into powerless people who didn't know what to do, didn't know how to defend themselves. There's a lot about the boarding school that in terms of language and culture that 
reflects a, a, a wider and more complicated scene. Dan Begay was filled with anger from experiences at boarding school. When I began to cry, that was when my wife told me. Those things happened a long time ago. This is now. You need to leave all this behind you. And uh, at, at that time, I, I didn't realize how I was very much still connected to what had happened to me way back then as a child. The Long Walk of the Navajos is a story of courage and perseverance. Their sacred land remains. The Long Walk and the Bosque Redondo, um, the experiences of my ancestors, um, to this day is still very difficult for many Navajo people um, to talk about.